We want to thank you for joining. Um, so today, uh, Jeff Emick was going to be with us and he did have an emergency. So he is really sorry not to be joining us, but we are going to take this opportunity to share with you um, an amazing course that we are building with his help and also with our partnership with RacerX. And we do have uh, the team at RacerX with us today and I'll introduce Cassie in just a few minutes. But I wanted to go over um, this course with you so that you are familiar with it. And this information will be coming out in our May newsletter um, on the 15th that we send out to you. So be sure you're looking for that. So you're pretty much going to get the heads up on this before the rest of the school. So, and this does apply for eighth grade and up, but if you're younger than eighth grade, please don't, you know, think this is a waste of time because this is exciting news in education. So we have um, worked with RacerX for a long time. As you know, our high school graduation is on the stage of Loretta Lynn's every year, which is very exciting. And if you ever want to see a slideshow or a video of that, you can just go to ontrackschool.com and take a look at our gallery. But in addition to that, we've put together a course um, that we're going to be talking about today with Cassie, and it's called Media Arts 101. And um, involved in the motocross industry, we can take a look at all the roles that are available for our students to learn about with this industry leader that we're partnered with. So you might have seen, because now you all have subscriptions to uh, the digital version of the magazine Racer X, and we have featured uh, in the last edition um, Matthew LeBlanc. We had a journalism contest and Matthew's essay is featured in there. And so every other month, one of our students will be featured in a various array of projects that go along with you know, the development of our course. So this course is going to be 10 credits for high school. It will be ready in the fall and it basically will give students the opportunity to explore various pathways uh, to gain credit. This could be with uh, photography, this could be with journalism, interviewing, uh, this could be graphic arts, uh, business management, uh, this could also reflect um, not just public speaking but uh, you know, marketing and also, you know, no matter what industry or role that you go into in the future, knowing how to speak on your behalf and advocate for your passion, whether it's to your sponsors, um, to your parents, to your teachers, right? Communication is super important. So we're excited about that. Our next assignment before this course is even built is on interviewing. So you're going to be seeing uh, the criteria for that come out um, in the newsletter as well. So it's an exciting time. Jeff, of course, has a webinar that is on our website. In fact, if you want to look at any of the webinars that you might have missed, you can go to the events tab at ontrackschool.com and you can look at Jeff's previous interview and you can hear about the obstacles that he had to overcome in order to you know, go on from his pro career to become a spokesperson on national TV. And uh, he did have obstacles with his speech that were quite impressive. And I know all of you have to deal with obstacles in our industry every day. Look at this obstacle that we're in right now. None of us have been in, in a situation like this where you know, the world kind of stops. And little by little, we're opening up. So we're, we're overcoming that as a team. And I'm, I'm excited about that. So I would like to um, remind you that the little grid at the top of your screen, there's like a little waffle grid on the top right. If you click on that, you could see everybody at the same time, which is super fun because you've got classmates in here that you want to connect to, right? And that's that's a really neat opportunity for you. Um, if you want to see the speaker view, you can also take a look at the, 
the speaker view as well. And at the end of um, Cassie's presentation, I can also share the course form link with you if you think you want to get a jump start and get registered for that course. Remember, it's 10 credits, grades 8 through 12, towards your high school graduation requirements working in the industry. We do have um, an enrollment process for that, and that's all laid out in that, in that form that you'll receive. So, um, Cassie, are you with us? I am. Hi, Andrea. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you. You too. I'm excited to be here. I um, am not going to lie. I didn't have a whole lot of time to prep for this. And I'm not Jeff Emig, so I'm very sorry to the kids that were looking forward to seeing Jeff. But uh, I will try to make this worth everyone's time. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know emergencies happen in life and you know, I'm not Jeff Emig either and I saw some disappointed faces, but I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to introduce what we're doing together. And I think everybody can learn from that. And Jeff is a part of that. So thank you so much for jumping in with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I just wanted to give you a little bit of kind of background about, um, you know, who I am and what my role is. So, um, I, so I've been with RacerX uh, since uh, August of 2018. Uh, my husband and my two young girls, Chloe and Charlie, they're uh, three and five, we decided to move from Utah um, all the way to the East Coast to be closer to our in-laws. And I left a, a you know, decade-long career, um, and, and it was definitely scary moving that far away, but we knew that we wanted to be close to our family. Um, so I got here and we live in a very, very small rural, rural area. Uh, I think we have like 30,000 people in our entire county. Um, and we are, we're actually 50 miles, um, it's about 50 miles, uh, east of, uh, RacerX headquarters. So I, I was just struggling trying to find some employment. And after being in the corporate world for a decade, uh, I knew that I didn't want to continue to try and climb the corporate ladder. That just wasn't for me. I never fit the mold. Uh, I probably swore too much <laughs> to, to fit that corporate world, um, you know? And so uh, I just struggled trying to find something where it felt like I wanted to invest my time. You know, in, in, the, in the corporate world, I was passed up for promotions. Um, I was definitely paid less than my male peers. I was working way more hours, had way more skills, and I think the biggest kicker to all of that was I was also trying to start a family. So um, I was up against a lot of challenges, and going to work was just, it was awful. Um, I tried to, to have passion in my job, and, and I was passionate about my skills, but I just never felt like I fit, like I fit in. <clears throat> so when I arrived here, I started looking for jobs, and Lo and behold, on Indeed, I found this job with RacerX. I didn't know who RacerX was, but I knew enough about motocross uh, that I knew that I needed to at least pursue it. <clears throat> and uh, the moment I walked into the lobby, I knew that it was the job for me. Everybody was super laid back. There's motorcycles in the lobby and um, years and years and years of memorabilia. And, um, you know, it was just super laid back. And, and the moment that I walked in there, I could feel the passion. And that was what was so exciting. Um, so I, I, you know, my every day that I've been, that I've been with Racer X since then, it's been an absolute just exciting challenge. You know, it's been hard, but it's been super fun. And I get to be around people who want to be there. <laughs> and most people can't say that about their jobs. So I feel very, very blessed. Um, so my previous experience, uh, when I was living in Utah, I was working for digital agencies. Um, I knew that I loved marketing. I just can never figure out the place that I fit into that um, world. I was also very much so an entrepreneur. Um, I've started a couple of businesses that I could never really get off the ground. Um, being a mom and uh, an entrepreneur is very tough. Um, you really don't have many places to hide to make phone calls. Uh, so this, uh, this uh, lockdown is, is kind of reminiscent of, of those days. Um, but anyways, uh, so it's, 
the experience that I had, I have a little one out here. She's knocking on my, on my office window, actually. Um, I knew that uh, I had a lot of skills in marketing and the digital world that I could bring to Racer X. You know, um, Racer X, I mean, the magazine world, it's a, it's a dying medium. You know, magazines are not flying off the shelf. My child is out there screaming at me now. <laughs> okay. um, that's, that's just so reflective of what we're all dealing with now. We understand. I, I get it. Uh, I don't mind it. It's just, uh, it's taking me off my, my zone yeah. here. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, since being with Racer X, um, I, you know, I, I quickly realized that the title that I had, um, I, I was going to expand very quickly. They... Racer X has done a lot of really amazing things, um, but I knew that I could propel them really into the 21st century. So I dug my heels in and um, the Coombs family, they entrusted me um, very quickly with, um, with their business. And I'm now second in command to both Davey and Carrie. And my role business manager is really just a catch all for a lot of different things that I do. Um, which makes it really fun wearing that many hats is it makes for a very short day. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, um, with their trust uh, in my experience and, and what I've done so far, um, I've done some really exciting things for the magazine. Um, I've been able to increase magazine subscriptions um, almost 20%, which we haven't seen subscription increases in at least five or six years. Um, just because the way that the magazine industry is going, it takes somebody that can really dig in and, and focus, and, and it's been fun. Um, you know, we've, uh, I also inspired um, a new look and feel for the magazine. So if anybody does read Racer X, um, last May, so just about 12 months ago, a year ago, uh, we relaunched our magazine. Um, you know, the, the staple of a magazine for many years was um, the shiny, glossy cover of a magazine. Um, what a magazine is turning into now is really more of a coffee table piece. It's a legacy item. It's, you can, you can, it, it's very similar to a record. Um, record sales took a nosedive for decades and nobody wanted records. And now the millennials are saying, ooh, I want, I want records. Record sales have been increasing the last several years dramatically. So um, I just knew that I needed to take where we were and transform us into more of a 21st century business. And um, so I wanted to show you guys uh, our, our new digital edition. I didn't prepare a whole lot of visuals, so I thought maybe just uh, scrolling through that would be really um, fun to, uh, to check out. Um, and I've never shared a screen on Zoom, so I will figure out how to do that. That's okay. There's a bottom, you should see a bottom yeah, green a button up towards mm -hmm. the... Yeah. And I don't know if the rest of you have seen, we have a new feature in Zoom while we're waiting for Cassie to, to share her screen. It says reactions and you can actually do a thumbs up or clap your hands on top of your picture. Sweet. Emojis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? We can, I cannot see it. Hmm. There's a little two up here. Uh, oh, I think I have to just click the button that says share. Um, there you go. Okay. That should work. There's some kind of security. Oh, that's strange. Until it has quit. Oh dear. Well, my computer doesn't want to let me share my screen for some reason. But anyways, everybody's going to be getting that uh, subscription anyways. So I think, Andrea, you had mentioned that um, they would be getting a digital subscription. They're al also getting a print subscription as well. And those uh, mailed copies should be out in the next couple of weeks. Everybody should uh, start receiving those. So make sure you check out the, uh, the piece that, um, who was it that you said uh, was the winner of the writing contest? That was Matthew LeBlanc. Okay, yeah. So that should be in this next coming up issue. So that's really exciting. That should be a super fun thing. We're, we're really hoping our readers will connect with that. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we've just done a lot of really, really fun things over the course of the last, you know, 18 months. 
And um, so we've just had a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, I think more than anything, um, the, the relationships that I've built already while being in this industry has been incredible. I mean, everybody knows that's in motocross. It's a very small world. Everybody knows everyone and it, it is like family. So I've got the Coombs family, but I've also got this extended family that, you know, everywhere that I go, anytime I travel, you know, people know my name and, and it's just, it's, it's been a really, really cool thing, you know, and, and being able to take my, my girls to a supercross race or a promoter cross race um, and get paid to do that. It's like, this is really cool. So um, it's just been, it's been, you know, a, a dream come true of finding, finding somewhere that I can be, you know, two things at once, whether for, for you guys, it's, it's being a racer. And, you know, even if you don't end up becoming a professional and, and that's your life, um, if you can find something, some kind of job that you're passionate about, it doesn't feel like work. <laughs> and that's, that's, I think, I think that's kind of what I'm trying to, to get across is, um, you know, the, the relationship that we have with, with on track and racer X, we're really trying to help you guys develop that hybrid, that, you know, cross contamination of education and passion. And um, so I, I wanted to give you just a little bit of um, backstory of, of, of why when I walked into the lobby, I knew that Racer X was for me. So I never raced motorcycles. Um, I definitely grew up on dirt bikes, um, but I never raced. Um, but uh, I came from a family of basically just adrenaline junkies. <laughs> um, I would imagine that a lot of your families are probably the same um, if you're in any kind of power sports or motorsports. So uh, my uncle Kerry, uh, he, he was probably the leading force of being like an adrenaline junkie. Um, he'd hop on anything with wheels. Uh, I remember a time back in the early 90s that uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was the first version of, a, of an electric bike. Uh, he took his bicycle and he put a weed eater motor on there. <laughs> and that was his electric bike. And uh, I, it was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, he ended up uh, dying in a plane crash. Um, mm. He was, uh, like I said, an adrenaline junkie. And uh, he died having a good time. Um, my other uncle, Mike, he died the year that I was born. And he died doing what he loved. Uh, he broke his neck on a motorcycle mm. uh, when he was 15. Um, my poor grandparents, they, they, they went through the ringer of motorcycles and power sports and all of that. So I, I, I empathize with your parents. Um, what, they, what you put them through is, uh, is not easy, but, uh, you know, they want to see you be happy. And so it's, it's pretty cool that they allow you to do that. Um, so it wasn't until uh, my older brother started racing motocross that I actually started to kind of understand the passion um, and the dedication needed to excel um, in, in motorsports. Um, during my teenage years, we spent basically every weekend uh, traveling around the Intermountain West, uh, going to races. Um, he was racing, I was flirting with boys. It worked out just fine for me. Um, but it, it gave me the opportunity to see how much commitment and sacrifice that my parents and my brother had to put into the sport. Um, I mean, not only the, the commitment and sacrifice, but the, the, the financial side of this. I mean, um, you know, the parents, they really do uh, go through a lot to make sure that, that you know, the kids get to um, at least feel some level of, you know, getting there. Um, so, uh, you know, we did that for many years, um, but he continued to stay in school. And uh, he was very smart, stayed, uh, he had great grades, but he kind of came to a cross section of, okay, am I good enough to continue racing motorcycles or do I need to go to college? And that was a very, very tough decision for him. Um, not one made lightly. Uh, I'm sure he thinks about it all the time, but he did decide that he needed to, uh, to go to college. Um, he got a scholarship um, and now he's a, uh, I think his role is a superintendent for the largest home builder um, in the United States. And uh, he, he's very grateful that he ended up um, continuing his education 
um, because we, we've seen it, you know, those that, that don't focus on continuing their education, it, it really can end up that you, you're in a bad spot and you don't have those skills that you need. So, um, you know, he had to, he basically had to swap in his bike for, for books and he had to sell his truck for a gas saving car. Um, but, uh, you know, he definitely wishes he could have made it in, 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 in motocross, but it just, it just didn't, he didn't have enough time or he didn't give enough effort. I mean, he had, he had broken his wrist three times. He'd had four concussions, um, broken his femur twice. So, um, you know, your, your body gets beat up pretty badly in, in motocross. So you can only take so much. So he's, he's definitely grateful that he, you know, stayed with school and focused on his education. And, um, so anyways, um, you know, I, it's clear that I, I firmly believe that, you know, taking your education seriously is very important. Um, nobody wants to make a plan B. It's, uh, you know, nobody wants to do that. Um, but that's definitely the smartest thing that I think that you can do. You know, life doesn't always work out the way that you, that you want it to, and actually doesn't usually work out the way that we want it to. Um, I don't think I've ever met anyone, anyone in my life that uh, had a plan and that's where they're at. So, um, you know, but setting yourself up for success, you know, no matter what lane you end up taking to get there is super crucial. So, how does this all relate to our relationship with on track? Um, you know, I, I, I've always um, developed or I've always uh, appreciated the, the program that you guys run. Um, and like I said, I've, I'm very passionate about education. So I reached out to Andrea um, and we just started talking about how we could support each other's goals. Um, you know, her goal is to, you know, make sure that she develops a curriculum that's exciting and, and, you know, something that you guys will be interested in. And our goals are, you know, to help develop the future of journalism and, you know, all the other roles besides just journalism in the sport and, and motorsports. So, you know, our, our first initial discussions, I think were great, but I couldn't have imagined um, what you guys put together in such a quick amount of time. I mean, it's awesome. Um, so, uh, you know, the development of the um, Industry Media Arts 101 class, I, I just think it's an incredible opportunity um, for the students to get hands-on experience um, with the leading motocross media outlet on the planet. Um, and for us, you know, we get to develop the future of the talent. So it's, it's really, really cool. Um, you know, the best kind of learning um, in my mind is when you can see it in action, uh, when you can have a mentor or, uh, you know, when you can apply it to your passions. Um, on Track has created, you know, the most exciting coursework alongside Racer X. And I'm sure you'll have other partners that will jump in and, and, and be partners and, and grow other, you know, motorsports and power sports. Um, but I think we're definitely off to a good start. Um, you know, even when I was in college, I didn't get opportunities like this. So it, it really is something that you guys should be excited about. Um, I certainly am. I'm excited to see the talent grow. And, you know, even if you're, you're young and you're not old enough to get in there yet, um, you know, if you've got skills, you send those to Andrea and we'll, we'll see what we can do. You know, we're, <laughs> we're open. Um, so for Racer X, like I said, we get to, you know, we get to support the bright young minds um, and helping you guys find your scholastic passions that will hopefully last a lifetime. Uh, like I said, print magazines have been dying, um, but only by reimagining what our place is in the world um, are we going to continue to thrive? Uh, we need our young people uh, to show us what you guys want um, and how you want to consume your media. Um, we need you to help creating the media that will resonate with, with you guys. So we just hope that we can inspire you to be um, creative with your words, with your videos, with your social media. Um, Creativity and journalism are one and the same. Um, we were talking to Tasha and Andrea kind of when we were developing the coursework and um, they kind of missed the video part. 
and um, both Andrew, our editor, and, and myself raised our hand and said, hey, you got to make sure that you've got a lot of video in there. Um, you know, Weege, who everybody knows who Weege is in our sport, he never could have imagined that he would have had to develop skills in software in, in video editing. Like, that is not his world. That is not his shtick. Um, he likes to be behind the camera, not, you know, sitting at a computer. Um, but uh, so you guys are in a, in a really good spot to start developing those skills now. Um, and those skills will definitely last a lifetime. So, um, you know, I just appreciate the opportunity to be working with you guys and, and you know, the opportunity to talk to you guys, the kids and the parents. And, um, you know, we're here to help develop whatever skills you want the, the students to learn and um, hopefully they're going to give you some feedback so we just want to be you know here to to help support learning and passions all in the same same go so well thank you cassie i i love the fact that we both have um student passion at the heart of this um and our industry is very much a small village in, in the world and I get goosebumps when I hear it because it is such a great opportunity. Um, what you do is so creative and our students are very much outside the box, which is why I think it's so important that we jumped in. I mean, our Tasha and I, our, our brains were just churning away, <laughs> you know, all the different things that we could do. I did pull up my digital racer x um and I'll, i'm going to share this cover with you because just look how gorgeous this oh is. thank you yeah yeah no problem um i no problem so i mean look at that i know some of you on the east coast are actually getting out to the track and i think that's so healthy but i mean the photography in here and um davy's article his editorial i'm just going to scroll mm -hmm. by the ads here but it's a great read and to be able to give you guys credit um, for this and, and honestly to foster your interest. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in something, you're all going to read it, right? Um, so I think it's important that, that we're doing that, that we're reading things of interest, discussing those things. There'll be discussions in our, in our class where we can talk about these. And then of course you'll see, um, Matthew's essay down here. Let's see if I can get to it. I didn't remember the where it was at. Hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. <laughs> here he is. So we had um, we had kind of a short window. We did have you know several of you apply, and we thank you and don't ever give up. Keep keep working at it. And um, right now we're looking at in every other month feature because we want to be realistic and what we can deliver. We, we want to over deliver and we don't want to disappoint. So, um, you know, it's just a beautiful piece with pictures. And so we look forward to featuring more of you in, in this. But in addition, having you have the opportunity to look at things you're interested in. I know that you're all racing and that you have goals and dreams and you want to, and I'm, I'm, I want you to continue to do that. I mean, my son is still racing, but he's also, you know, gone to school. I experimented on him. He's the reason why we, you know, created on track school. So he was the guinea pig, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But he's gone on and because he's had, you know, some college courses and we fine tuned his education to his interests, which is finance, he has a successful business. And I want the same for all of you because you're like my kids. You know, we're one big family over here. So I want to open this up to um, Q&A for Cassie. So just, just jump in the chat if you have a question about the course, if you have a question, you know, about something that we can um, clear up for you, please take this opportunity. We'd love to hear from you. And like I said, you'll see... You'll see the, um, the link in the newsletter. Make sure you're reading your newsletters. I mean, we really rely heavily on email. I know, I know, you know, some of our younger folks don't email. It's just, it's just Instagram, but it's really important that you open that up and take a look at, at that link. So let me know if anybody's got any questions for us. And we really just totally appreciate you jumping into this <laughs> today. Thanks. 
Um, Andrea, can I maybe say a few more things about the course that I'm excited about? Yes, um, please. All right. So, um, Miss Ashley, who is actually in the Zoom meeting with us, and Miss Holly are going to be working together. They're actually building the curriculum. Um, they helped us come up with the outline, and the racer team is helping us kind of connect the dots. So we've had some really exciting conversations about who can help us help us connect those dots as in um, different guest speakers, um, different projects that you guys will kind of partner on with, um, whether it be with Racer as an event or outside of an event, you know, with their guidance. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a unique experience and a unique class, but as Andrea mentioned, there is a process, so we'll have, um, if you guys are interested, we'll have the link available for you guys in the newsletter, and then we can also, are we going to add it to the chat, Andrea, as well? Is that what you want to do? Sure, I can add that link. So, um, so yeah, so we're just really excited. Ashley? Okay, Ashley, do you have any other thoughts for the class? <laughs> Hello everyone. Um, most of you know me as the English language arts person, um, but I'm so excited about creating this class with Miss um, Holly. She has been so great to work with, and I think that especially working with Racer X, and um, we're just getting a lot of creative ideas and people that we want to have bring on to do webinars with the class and everything. We're thinking we're gonna we're gonna want to try to do like. A webinar with someone outside that's not me or Miss Holly um, at least once a month so we're looking at creating units that are going to be so each month's going to have its own unit and then a special guest speaker about that unit for that month so um, I think we're looking at maybe doing at least eight months worth because I do know that motocross is March super busy and um, December's got Christmas break so I think those two months we may not do as much as the other months but um, we're really excited and we actually have a meeting to do more course creation tomorrow Miss Holly and I so we're working on getting that done for you guys. <laughs> Great thank you so much for all you're doing Ashley. Um, I want to add one more thing that maybe we forgot. I know most of us in here are motocross racers, but we do have some um, karting kids and some other kids that maybe don't do sports or maybe interested in more kind of traditional sports like football or basketball or baseball. Um, with our team, we've kind of brainstormed and are looking outside of motocross to connect those dots as well. So we have some resources outside of the sport um, or outside of motocross to help us connect those different concepts and and really broaden our our depth of networking and community for you guys so again i'm super excited like i want to yeah. take the class because i think it's going to be so cool and i just want to you know hear from some of these speakers that we have um we have uh I think, who is it that we talked to? Sean, right, Andrea, that may help support this process as well. There's just so many different different levels of opportunity for this class, so we're super excited. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's a project, it's going to be kind of a project-based class where you do a certain amount of projects um, throughout the school year, and then um, where we, Miss Holly and I were already coming up with ideas for students that want to take our class that are not necessarily in a motocross um, alternative things for them to work on and as well um, as well as um, just because you're not in motocross racing um, doesn't mean you can't help with some of the, like the, the stuff for the magazine it helping always improves the learning of um, any of the elements of the magazine that we're helping with And you know, I would love to introduce um, Cassie to Wanda. Wanda, I don't think you've met Cassie because we've been in Hi, some Cassie. marketing meetings. So Wanda is our support coach. She um, takes care of our team, our teachers, registrar, report cards, 
class. A lot of those hats too. A lot of those hats. <laughs> yeah, she's at the Hall of Justice we all do. today. <laughs> yeah, the Hall of Justice today. We need Just that. I figured out how to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Good. I'm glad that you're at the Hall of Justice. I hope you represent <laughs> all of us and get some stuff done over there today. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. we won't go there. Well, nice to meet you, Cassie. I'm super excited about um, adding this class to our, our repertoire as well. I think the students are going to just take it and run with it. I'm, I'm excited to see what they come up with. So it's really cool. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. I'll stay on if, if anybody wants to chat, but thank you so much. And thanks for staying with us. Um, Cassie, I think you did a great job. I think Jeff will be envious. So we're gonna just go with that. And thanks for jumping in. I know it's late on the East Coast and I'm sure your littles need you. So we appreciate your time. <laughs> Bye.